Coming up, Disney says no to children. And Disney says they're going to overhaul Downtown Disney. And this time, they really, really mean it. Also this week, Sean Thompson and William Rubenstein are going to talk about military uh, options at Walt Disney World. And John and Kevin will have their review of the Liberty Tree Tavern, where a new phrase will be coined for our listeners. Uh, we just got back from California, folks. We're jet-lagged, we're tired, and we're in no mood to do this. This could be a very interesting show. Coming up. This is the Dis Unplugged, episode number 586, for the week of March 19th, 2013. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. The best reason to use Dreams Unlimited Travel is because I said so, which always worked for my mother, so I figured I'd try it here. DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com, because I said so. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show, coming to you live from the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Warner, joined at the table this week by my good friends, John Magi, Kevin Close... (laughs) <laughs> William, <laughs> William Rubenstein and Sean Thompson back in the in the production nook. Producer Dustin West and associate producer uh, Craig Williams. I tell you, folks, I'm jet lagged. I'm tired, and I'm really in no mood. Uh, and also joining us on Skype a little later on in the show from the wintry haven of Wisconsin, our own Tommy Sandvik and. Uh, Got a lot coming up this week. Um, so let's just do some housekeeping. Uh, first, uh, I just want to plug the Disney Park Bench videos again because everybody seems to love them. Oh, yeah. If you haven't checked them out, go check them out. Uh, we release three new ones every week. And I will tell you, we filmed some awesome ones out at Disneyland. We had a lot of people following us on our Disneyland trip on Twitter and on Facebook, and they were asking if we were going to be doing uh, any park benches from Disneyland? And the answer is yes. We got a ton of them. There's no way we were going to be out in Disneyland and not be getting park benches. And we got some. I mean, there were some great ones that Craig shot. Some absolutely great ones. I'm uh, Craig also did a great job filming a point of view video, a POV video on California Screaming at uh, Disney California Adventure. Uh, check that out on our YouTube channel. Links to that in the show notes page. Disunplugged.com. Oh, excuse me, little. A little gassy. Um, well, at least I'm burping. Uh, if you have questions or comments for the team, uh, please go ahead and send us an email at podcast at disunplugged.com or give us a call toll-free 1-877-310-9662. We're back to doing our email and voicemail shows once a month. If we use your email or voicemail on the show, you'll get your choice of a Dis Unplugged t-shirt or a pin and lanyard. And then once a month, we select someone at random for a shot at one of the fabulous prizes in the fabulous prize matron. So be sure to send us in podcast at disunplugged.com. And speaking of uh, Disneyland, uh, we mentioned last week we were going to be going to Disneyland. We did. We got back, I don't know, like an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were going to have a special show uh, around that trip coming up April 16th. Tom Bell, the host of the Dis Unplugged Disneyland podcast, is going to be here in the studio joining us for that. And uh, we've got some great, great stuff coming up. If you've never been to Disneyland, this is a show you're going to want to watch. We have a lot of really cool stuff uh, to show you yes, and talk to you about. Yeah, I just want to add to that. I just want to thank everybody for following along with our uh, social updates for, oh, yeah. for the past five days. We tweeted a lot. Oh, we and posted a lot of Instagram photos. Instagrammed and, and Foursquared four square and yeah. Facebook. It was crazy. But there's a lot of a uh, lot of nice interaction with with listeners. Yeah, it was good. It was awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. So that's what I have in housekeeping. Anyone else? Nothing here. Seriously? Yeah. I don't have anything. Nothing. However, I'm going to be ready every time you say my name. You told me last <laughs> week I wasn't paying attention, and all they saw was the top of my head. I'm ready. <laughs> With his Chandler Bing smile. (laughs) All right. Well, then we'll turn it over to John with the news. All right. Our first news story. Walt Disney Company considers buying out News Corp Steak and Hulu. According to an AP Newswire article, the Walt Disney Company is considering buying out News Corp Steak and Hulu and Hula 
It's Hulu. <laughs> Hulu. And vice versa. And vice versa. Well, they're, gonna, they're talking about buying out each other's stake. Uh, the fate of the company comes into question as the online video streaming ser- service prepares for the departure of CEO Jason Keeler. Andy Forsell, Hulu's senior vice president of content, will be interim CEO after Keeler leaves. Uh, the plans under consideration by the companies include putting Hulu back up for sale, uh, and also Disney is in considering buying out News Corp's stake in the company. Uh, Disney and News Corp, the parent company of broadcasters ABC and Fox, jointly own Hulu with NBC owner Comcast Corp. But they all have an awkward relationship with the service. Um, The broadcasters independently offer streaming of full TV shows on computers and apps, often for free. Yet a paid portion of Hulu, known as Hulu Plus, requires a monthly $8 fee for many of the same shows. The fee is also required to access Hulu Plus on mobile devices. Both Disney and News Corp have said that the service is losing money, despite it bringing in nearly $700 million of revenue in 2012. It had more than 3 million paying subscribers at the end of the year. Well, one of the reasons Hulu isn't doing well is because they're getting worse and worse with the commercials. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you know, it used to be you'd watch something on Hulu and you'd have these you know, intermittent commercial breaks that would be about 15, maybe 30 seconds. And you'd get one of them. And maybe that would happen three times in the course of a show. Now, they're getting longer and they're getting more frequent. And they're adding, like, instead of watching one, it's turning into network television. Right. And if I want, you know, if I wanted the commercials, I'll TiVo them. Right, just DVR and 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 fast forward past them. I don't use Hulu. Is the eight dollar a month? Is that commercial free? No, no, no. It's not. Wow. The eight dollars a month gives you access to a larger library, and of sometimes shows. quicker than if you weren't paying. So I think sometimes new shows will show up a week later for. Um, normal subscribers, but if you're paying for the Hulu Plus, you get it the next day. So right. $700 million in revenue, and they couldn't turn a profit between subscribers and advertisers. Well, you know, the problem is that Hulu was created by the networks in order to combat what they saw happening online with the delivery of content. And they wanted in. But what they did was they basically have taken the network model and just tried to apply it to the web, right. and it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. So you take a look at what Amazon is doing, you take a look at what Netflix is doing, and this is scaring the crap out of the networks. You know, net, you know, we talked about this before, Netflix invested $100 million in developing House of Cards, which is a political drama starring Kevin Spacey, which is out of this world. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Anything with Kevin Spacey, and I love him. But it's an awesome show. $100 million they spent on this. Uh, Amazon is doing the same thing. They're developing original programming. Uh, Netflix has Arrested Development coming up, yep. uh, which, you know, I'm a, big, I'm a big fan of Arrested Development. They're investing money in this stuff. That's where it's going. They're bypassing the network. Some of the best new shows on television aren't going to be on television. They're going to be on the web. And that's, this is what Hulu was trying to, you know, combat against, and it's not working because if people want to watch you know really if, if people want to watch network television they're going to DVR it a lot of people have DVRs the other thing too is a lot of the things that, that they're showing you can watch on abc.com you can go back to the network right. sites afterwards and catch your show so mm-hmm. it seems like it seems like this service was done as an interim fix until they all sort of built their own things well the model of commercials the network model of commercials, and it's just, it's going away. It's going away, and they're not adapting. On Hulu, what always happens to me is I'll see the same commercial every single break. Mm-hmm. Oh. So I'll see the same commercial yeah. five times in a show. I know. How effective is that, right? Oh, it's not. I'm mute. I, I get you, mad. Yeah. I used to watch Hulu. Uh, I was a subscriber to Hulu Plus, but when they started getting crazy with the amount of commercials, I stopped. I just, I wasn't interested. I wasn't interested. So, I don't know. I mean, unless they're going to start really doing, if they're not going to invest in programming for the web, 
the way Netflix and Amazon and other companies are. I, I don't see it. But between between Netflix and um, having a DVR with my cable provider, and then there's certain other ones that you can't get elsewhere anywhere, like uh, HBO Go. Between those services, I'm set. I don't need Hulu Plus, because like you said, it's all network stuff. I can DVR that. Now, if you're not paying for a cable uh, service, maybe Hulu Plus is the way to go for you, but I, it, there's so many other services that I can get <clears throat> for free or relatively inexpensive. That Hulu Plus is just not on my radar well, at all. The other thing too is um, with a lot of cable companies now, they always have prime time on demand. And part of what Hulu did was they got all the shows out really quickly. So if you already have even a digital cable box, you can get all the prime time shows pretty much the night yeah. that they come out. And that makes Hulu even more irrelevant. Uh, wow, irrelevant. Yeah. It's interesting. You talked about original content. My Rapid Fire is about some original content that Disney's developing, and they're going to release it on Disney.com. So they're... So they're undercutting themselves on Hulu then. Right. You know? It's almost like they don't need that service. Well, I mean, look, if they end up buying it out, buying out... I don't, I don't know how big News Corp share is, but, you know, you mentioned NBC Universal, which is owned by Comcast, Comcast. now, and part of the deal Comcast had to make to buy NBC was that they had to be a silent partner in Hulu. Oh. And so they don't have, NBC doesn't have any input on what goes on really with, with Hulu. They're just kind of along for the ride right now. So that would make Disney the majority owner in Hulu if they bought out. But I don't understand. Did you say that, that, that and Disney's going to buy out News Corp, and News Corp's going to buy out Disney? The problem is that nobody knows what's going to happen once this CEO leaves. Once this current CEO leaves, there's discussions of each company buying out the other. Oh, okay. Okay. So the fate is unknown, but Disney, the, the story reads that Disney wants to buy out News Corp. Now, it be interesting to see. I honestly think Hulu would stand a better chance in News Corp's hands. Than, they, than it would in Disney. Is Hulu a dinosaur now? Is it one of those things that came along early and just is now obsolete? In my the... opinion, yes. In my opinion, Hulu missed the opportunity to become relevant. And, uh, you know. They I, tried with Hulu Plus. It just didn't hit. No. No, you're right. But things like HBO, HBO Go, yeah. which is, you know, if your cable company is part of it and you subscribe to HBO on cable, you can get it through... You can get HBO Go on, uh, on on iPad. Well, our Bright House, we have Bright House right. cable here, and pretty much if you have any cable subscription, you can get it through your iPad. Right. You can get your, your programming that way. Right. All right, moving on to our next news story. Disney to impose age policy at theme parks. The Orange County Register is reporting that the Walt Disney Company is standardizing and enforcing a policy across all their American resort properties that, the states, that states children under the age of 14 will have to be accompanied by someone 14 or older to get into, th into their theme parks. The policy will go into effect starting March 23rd. Pre previously, the Disney Company had varying age policies. Quote, we regularly review all policies and identified an opportunity to provide a consistent age of admission and address a question we occasionally get from parents, end quote, says Disneyland spokeswoman Susie Brown. The policy was not triggered by any specific issue with unaccompanied children in a park, she said. Because most children under 14 do not have government-issued identification cards, the policy won't be enforced by ID checking. Employees will approach those who look young, and if the children are under 14, they will contact a parent or guardian. Families with annual passes, some of whom, who, whom routinely drop their children off at a park for the day will be notified to ensure they they know about the policy change Brown said um, okay so what what kid isn't going to lie about his age I was just going to no. say that you know are you under 14 no no <laughs> okay well, what kid's not going to be smart enough to sort of mingle with another family and go okay I'm with them well I just I, I find it interesting that they're even approaching this policy um, look, I don't have kids. If I did, you know, I, I've been asking myself this the last couple of days, would I let my kid 
by, go run, run off by themselves in a Disney theme park. Part of me says I would because I think it's generally safe. Another part of me says, no, I wouldn't. I, I, so I'm not sure. Again, not being a parent, I don't think we have a parent in the room right now. No. One so, thing I think is interesting is uh, the ticket price for an adult starts at 10, 10 and up. So you have to pay for an adult ticket price, but they can't be in the park by themselves until they're 14. That's a, that's a common complaint people have. What, since when does Disney think that an adult begins at 10? That's their theme park pricing. That's their food pricing. That pricing is based on at the age of 10, you can enjoy most of the things in the park. Um, you're tall enough to ride most of the rides, generally speaking. Of course, there are exceptions here and there, but I think that's the that's the reason. But is it fair up. to say that you can't be in the park by yourself until you're 14, but you have to pay for an adult ticket? Sure. They can do whatever they want. Oh, of course they can. I mean, it's private property. They can do whatever they want. I can tell you that when we first came to Disney, I was... I was 13, 12 and a half or 13, and we were allowed, me and my brother, who was nine at the time, were allowed to go to the park by ourselves. My mom and dad were staying at the Contemporary, and there was one park at the time, but we were allowed to go by ourselves. Well, also keep in mind the policy that they're implementing says that uh, if you're under 14, you have to be accompanied by someone who is 14 or older. So if you've got a 14-year-old and a 10-year-old, they can be in the parks by themselves as long as they're together. Uh, that is how the policy reads. Uh, and the fact that, you know, they're kind of doing this right now. They announced this last week. It goes into effect in four days on the 23rd of March. Could this be an insurance issue? Could be. Could be. Well, it already goes in line with their policy on, like, single riders for their rides. Um, if you want to be a single rider on most attractions, like when I worked at Test Track, you had to be 14. Um and if you wanted to take someone younger, you had to be at least the height requirement and 14. So it's kind of already been working in the rides, but now they're just doing it for the full park. I kind of think it's probably not a big deal, but it's just the, the fact that they've made such an announcement out of it. Mm. I can't imagine that this is a huge problem. I mean, we've all spent enough time in the parks. Have we ever seen groups of roaming kids? I mean, I've never seen, you know, I go to the mall and there's packs of roaming. Yeah, but not under 14, I don't think. Yeah, I think there's mm, Yeah, 12, I think that's 13. probably the case. I think there's more than, I think there are more than going to the parks in the mall. So I think it's, you know, I don't know that, I don't know how big an, uh, an issue it actually is. So the, the way I read this is that you have to be 14 to get in. Once you're in the park, you go to whatever you want. Well, not that's, if they're being stopped by cast members. No, but the way I read it was that the only the age enforcement started when you at the gates. No, but what I'm saying is, didn't they? Didn't you read that cast members will stop people that look under 14? I'm saying there's no identification because kids of 14 don't have a government issued ID. Does that mean they're going to check them at the it turnstiles? Says, or? Employees will approach those who look young. They're carrying very gentle tasers. But I mean, are they going to approach them at the turnstiles <laughs> or throughout the park? I I don't have that as part of my news story. I'm yeah. sorry. I don't have that qualification. Going back to your question, I think it would depend on my kids. If I had kids and I had a 12-year-old and a 13-year-old who I thought were mature enough, I would certainly let them go to the parks by themselves. It really I think it depends on the kid, too. Right. At 13, I was fine in the park. By right. I, I, I think, you know, I think at 14, gen again, generally, you, can, you can't speak for every child, but generally speaking, at 14, I think you're mature enough, old enough to be on your own in a theme park. It's a still a controlled environment. But I, 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 you know, I don't know how this how this plays with you know people who have kids. That's why I can only speculate because I don't have children. You know, I nieces and nephews that I have that are like children, my children. Uh, I did let them run around in the parks. Well, not at that age though. No, not at that age. I didn't. It's not like you're dropping them off at a biker bar in Tijuana. Right. No, I understand that. I understand that. But still, there's you know, I think. <clears throat> I think I tend to, I, I, I would probably tend to uh, err on the side of being overprotective as opposed to not, but I don't know. I also think part of this announcement might come with the timing of uh, My Magic Plus, my Disney experience. I was just going to say that. I wonder how much, of, how much of that initiative is playing into because this. Because the bands will tell you the age of the person. If so you were honest when you signed up. Well, I mean, yeah, that's true, but you kind of have to give your date of birth, everyone's date of birth. When right, you but you don't have to be honest about it. That's true. 
the only person that has to be honest about it is the person checking in at the resort that has to show a photo ID. Yeah, and the um, parents are going to teach the kids how to lie about it because cast members aren't going to walk around asking if they're 14. They're going to ask them what their birthday is, and right. it's just as simple as letting them know, okay, you need to say this is your birthday instead of how many what it actually is. year-olds have been coached on the fact that they're really two and a half? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bobby, lie to that nice young man. I mean, it's happened. I used to see it all the time. Kids would come up, say, oh, yeah, I'm 13. Say, you can't ride. And then they'd come back later, and they'd say they're 14. What's your birthday? And then they'd have it all made up. Yeah, well, as I, well, you've already started this conversation. As cast members, we are trained to not ask, are you under 14 or are you seven? You just ask, how old are you? Because kids, first instinct is to tell the truth. They're excited about how old they are. They're going, I'm this many. And so they the usually. 14 year olds um, do that? That's how Dustin does it. Um, I'm this many. <laughs> Cast members aren't trained to add. <laughs> the most embarrassing thing was what happened when Dustin turned 21. <laughs> oh, God. What? Is it? what? Stop. All right. I don't understand. What? Had, I missed uh, it. I, like, you had to hold up how many fingers. No. <laughs> okay. oh, I, you know, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I Personally, I don't have a problem with it. But I don't have kids, so... You know, I wonder how parents. It's it's interesting that uh, obviously I think I think a general opinion. I think most people, in my mind, I think most people would think that it's up to the parents to make that decision about their particular children. Um, but for some reason, obviously Disney is putting this policy into place, and they must have some sort of reason to say fourteen. Right. Well, I mean, you know. there hasn't been a. a an issue that you know that's been publicized anyway regarding this. So, what is it? I, I, they, they didn't just sit down and say, "Okay, let's make it 14 right. today." Uh, there had to be up. a reason. Something's coming so, up. So, yeah. I, I think you're right, I th John. I think it's probably going to be attached somewhere, somehow, to uh, Magic Your Way, the Magic Bands. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why 14 matters. Or some new policies coming out. Um, I was going to say it might have had something to do with that whole the White Rabbit Disneyland incident, but the last thing we saw is all those kids were accompanied by a parent. Right. Who encouraged them. So, I mean, you don't have that, you know, it's not like they were running around the parks as a bunch of kids. So, I don't know what it is. It'll be interesting to find out what comes up. All right. And our final news story this week. Disney officially announces Disney Springs. Last week, we discussed the rumored and leaked information for Disney Springs, the reimagined downtown Disney area project. This week, Disney Parks and Resorts chairman Tom Staggs made the announcement official. Tom Staggs thinks Disney Springs will be among the best places to relax at Walt Disney World in 2016. The Disney Parks and Resorts chairman said the new Disney Springs will be better than what the company ever had imagined in the rumored and now dead Hyperion Wharf project. The complex will include four new and renovated areas and double the amount of shops, restaurants, and entertainment venues over the next couple of years. Uh, quote, featuring distinct brands, world-class restaurants, and unforgettable environments, Disney Springs will be brought to life with the same focus on storytelling and attention to detail that goes into our theme parks, resorts, and cruise ships, resulting in a welcoming space that only Disney could create, Stagg said. In total, Disney Springs will create 1,200 new construction jobs and 4,000 permanent jobs, including food and beverage, retail, and management positions. Ta-da! <laughs> Disney Springs. Okay, well, look. Let's, let's go ahead and bring Tommy in. Uh, Tommy Sandvik, our uh, resident expert on all things downtown Disney. How are you, Tommy? I'm good. How, are you, how do you feel about this announcement? Well... They really wanted to, I think we all wanted more than Hyperion Wharf. Uh, they promised us a bold new vision, and that wasn't really cutting it. Um, so I'm glad that they're doing something on a much larger scale. Um, I think that the, there's components of it that are much needed, um, the parking garages, and uh, because the traffic is so terrible down there. Um, and... Um, they seem to be actually creating a viable way around uh, 
what is now Pleasure Island. And, uh, and so I think that there's an opportunity there to uh, bring in some options for um, adults. I'm not saying high energy dance club but i think that that's a segment that's lost they know it and uh they're looking to to uh, rectify that in fact on the disney parks blog uh someone asked anything for the 21 and up crowd and tom staggs responded and said yes there will be uh new entertainment uh, options uh, catering to the 21 and up crowd so uh that was at, at least we got that little bit of information well one of the of one of the rumors that we've heard which actually we've got some credible backup to this rumor while we were out in california was that they're thinking about bringing trader sam's out to disney springs now trader sam's for those who don't know is the new uh bar uh located at the disneyland hotel it's a tiki bar and it's very popular really cool we love it even if you don't drink i don't drink I love it. It's an awesome place. Um, and we heard that there have been managers and Imagineers from Orlando out there researching, looking at things, asking questions. So they are at least thinking about bringing Trader Sam's out to uh, downtown Disney or Disney Springs, which I'm going to tell you, I think I... I think that would be huge. I think that would be such a hot spot. The closest thing they could do to replacing the Adventurers Club would be bringing yeah, exactly. Trader Sam's back to or out to out to Orlando. It would be such a yeah. good addition to, to downtown Disney. Trader Sam's. They'd have to make it bigger because it's a fairly small small bar. Yeah. yeah. But well, I, I don't think, think they. I think when they built it, I don't think they expected it to be as popular yeah. as it was. It's really difficult to get a table. Um, they have a very limited amount of seating inside, and they have more seating outside on their on their deck. But it really is a challenge to get a table. Now, is Trader Sands out of Disneyland? Is that a twenty one and up bar only, or is it family friendly? Where it's family. Well, outside is family friendly. I'm not sure about inside. I didn't see any. I don't think. Yeah, I, I don't think inside. I, I don't think they stop you mm-hmm. from bringing your kids in. But it's a bar. Right. Yeah. It's a bar. So, you know, and but we've seen. You know, parents bring 10-year-olds and sit them at the end of the bar. We saw that when we did the last uh, Drink Around around the World. world. We were in... uh, Was it uh, the Cuban? Yeah. uh, 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 Bongos? Bongos. Bongos, yeah. And there was, you know, two parents and what looked to be a (laughs) 7-year-old sitting on the bar stool next to him. I mean, you know, that kid's going to have great things to share when they're in a 12-step program in 15 years. Um, But, yeah. I, I think Trader Sam's would be awesome. I, I think the, the lack of details about what quote unquote retailers, the only thing they said about the retailers was it's not going to be Disney. So, what stores are they bringing in? What, you know, that's going to play a big role in how much appeal this place has. Well, the stores, even the stores at downtown Disney in California, have changed. Yeah. I, they're, what they're going to do is they're going to plug them in, and, and when they stop making a profit, they'll unplug them and plug something else in. Well, do we think that do we think that the downtown Disney model in California is basically what they're going to kind of go for here? I loved downtown Disney in California so much better than ours. It just has a completely different feel, right. a whole different vibe. The only yeah. problem is with that is in California it has multiple purposes. You're forced to walk past those mm-hmm. stores if you want to get to those parks. Right. So our downtown Disney is a destination. Is a destination. Right, yeah. So you have to make destination restaurants. You have to make destination shopping. You have to make this something that people want to go to. Now here's my concern. In order to make this happen, this expansion happen, and, and put the things they want to put in there, they're talking about building a parking structure. They have to. Mm. And I can tell you, too. if if it is become if it becomes more difficult to park there, I won't go. No. I actually don't think parking there is an issue. No, oh, it is. <laughs> we always go. I, I was going to say we never have trouble getting a parking spot. I've never said to myself, "Oh, at no downtown parking. Disney, never." never. I never oh, have always, trouble getting always. A Always. I've actually left downtown Disney and gone to Universal to go to a movie before because everything was full all the way down, including this entire Cirque parking lot. Oh, my gosh. Never. I've never. And I've, I've been there at all times. That's that's the where on Disney property. That's where I spend the most time. But I have to say this. I also think, too, we choose to go 
when it's less crowded. Same thing with theme parks. We don't go to the theme parks when it's the most crowded. But still, we've been there during Christmas, and I've never had a problem getting a parking spot. Really? Never. I, oh. I mean, it's it's like going to the mall at Christmas. You, you drive around of, until you get a parking spot, but you always get one. And you get a I people. imagine them putting in a five-story parking garage. This is going to increase the number of people in these spaces. It's going to make downtown Disney feel unbelievably crowded. Now, I don't know how much space they're talking about adding that might absorb some more people. But I think I'm all for it. I just think this parking garage thing is just going to make it even worse. Other, because they're still going to have the same amount of road space. Well, yeah, well but- one of the things, uh, Dwayne Bevel from the Orlando Sentinel uh, had an interesting article up yesterday, I think, uh, where he talked about you know some of the things he thinks is going to happen. Uh, one of them uh, being that uh, they're going to add an off-ramp uh, the, from I-4 uh, as part of the Epcot Center off-ramp. They're going to make another offshoot to make it easier to get over there. Oh, wow. Um, hmm. And I think if they can improve the traffic getting over there, making it easier to drive there, uh, improve the parking situation, I'm glad that you don't have a problem. I hate going there. I will there. agree that traffic, I don't have a problem with parking. Traffic is a pain in the neck. Nice Either um, way you come from, you have to go through like eight stoplights. Right. Whether you come from uh, the Hotel Plaza Boulevard or you come from World Drive. And I can't even imagine how they would improve it. I'm sure someone would improve it. I'm sure someone will think of it, but I can't imagine at some point you've got to dump people out onto that road that's right outside of downtown Disney. So Hover cars. What I, what I think is kind of cool though is that they are going to build a walkway from Saratoga Springs yes to the downtown Disney area I think that's pretty cool and then they're gonna the the th- thing I saw was they're gonna build a uh, walkway over the water kind of like what SeaWorld has so you're gonna have sort of this wooden walkway that cuts across that lake mm-hmm. that's it goes, there. I think I read it goes from Rainforest Cafe to T-Rex yes that's what I heard Tom that's yeah, what I heard as well that area I think that sounds cool and that whole area is Horrible to walk through. Right. Book right end, book so. ended by two crappy restaurants. Right, that too. <laughs> and when you talk about capacity, you know, if you put if you put Pleasure Island, what's Pleasure Island now, to use, there's a whole bunch of space where people can do stuff. So it's, if it, if you're driving people to the entire area rather than those two ends, I think it could work. I think so too. I think Pleasure Island has a problem with the way it's laid out. I think the stairs act as a natural barrier for people. Right. You get to those stairs and you think, eh. <laughs> never mind. Um, and I'm not just, I, th- I think that's kind of a natural reaction to it. It seems like a different place. It doesn't seem like an extension of the marketplace, and it certainly doesn't seem like an extension of the west side. You actually get the feeling that you've entered a different zone. And I think that's sort of a subconscious feeling. I don't know that it's, I don't know that most people would say, oh, I don't think I should go up those stairs. I, you know how they say people turn right when they go into a theme park? I think that's the same thing. I think your natural inc- inclination is, oh, that's not someplace I'm supposed to go. So I think they're going to have to make that more inviting or more appealing, or I don't know what they'll do to it. But I think that's a problem now. Well, I was happy to hear that they are definitely getting rid of Captain Jack's. Oh, that um, should have been bulldozed a long that, time a ago. A long time ago. I mean, just to talk about like the height of crappy restaurants. Retro 70s is fun. That's not. <laughs> I've also been told Apricot Lane is closing. That's not released, but I have What's sources. That? That Where am I going to get no. all my clothes? I was just going to say, Tommy, is that where you shop for your clothes? <laughs> no. What's Apricot Lane? And where is it? It's a clothing it's store. It's like Talbot's. Or... Yeah, it's a clothing <laughs> store. <laughs> Chico's. <laughs> <laughs> where is it? It's uh, in the old Harley Davidson store. Near the movie yeah, theater? it's connected to the old like, no, so the it's, Mannequins Atrox yeah, building. Mannequins oh. and across from Raglan oh, Road. So we never go it's, in that area. So there are it's a lot a of middle-aged place. women coming to shop at Pleasure Island? With scarves and huge necklaces. <laughs> <laughs> it's like your chunky jewelry. It's like Grace on Smash. Um, well, I, <laughs> I was amazed. That's the thing. I think they're going for like, they're trying to keep people. Um, I think that they're, a, a part of them, they're trying to go after um, the outlet malls. I think that the rise in international tourism in Orlando and the amount of traffic the malls get, both Millennia, uh, Florida Mall, and um, and the outlets, really, uh, I think that they're going after retailers that are appealing to that because a lot of us will say, well, I'm, why would I go to Disney to 
I don't know, buy a Mac MacBook. Uh, let, if, for instance, let's say Apple were in there. But international tours do. They come to Orlando to shop just as much as they come to go to the theme parks. Yeah, that's a uh, very and interesting I think, point. And I've seen it firsthand with uh, with my uh, you know with my in laws. Uh, they come and they go to the mall and they just shop like crazy. All you have to do is walk through cheaper. any one of the outlets and everyone's pulling a suitcase that they bought at the mall. Right. Right. I think that's a good point, Tommy. I I, I think you have an, an excellent idea there. My problem though is that I think people understand the outlet malls are a deal. And you're not going to get a deal at Disney. No, there's never going to be well, you know a fifty percent off Disney store on Disney property. No, but I think that you know Disney's you know everything Disney does ultimately is they look they, they sit down and take a look at okay where are we losing people where are people leaving property They're going to the and what do we mall. do to keep them here? That could be something they end up doing here because they do I mean a lot of international tourists leave Disney property to do that shopping. I wonder if they won't try and, they're not gonna be able to compete with an outlet mall, but I think they could definitely, definitely throw a few things in there that would take a chunk out of that business. And less well, the, seen, out, less the outlet mall than I think maybe Mall of Millennia. Well, I, we've seen yeah. that having a retail store in an, uh, a vacation destination, the Oasis and the Allure have a coach store on them. Mm-hmm. So I think to myself, well, they must think that people who are on vacation are going to make an impulse perch. I'm not sure Apricot Lane was the right choice, but what do I know? Um, <laughs> and that's but, interesting because that's on the list of sort of vendors that were are being vetted. There was kind of a list that got leaked, and uh, Coach was, was one of them on there. There was uh, Coach, uh, Apple, of course, um, and then just some like a couple Disney concepts. And one thing that that uh, Tom Stagg says is there won't be a direct copy of anything on the West Coast, but that doesn't mean something couldn't come here in a different form. That makes me sad. But in because terms of vendors, there there was a leaked list out there that had a a couple different things. So a store like Coach is exactly it seems what they might be going for in discussions with something of that nature. I would love to see a Wonderground Gallery. There's this shop out in California, oh, yeah. downtown Disney. Um, it's called Wonderground Gallery, and they have all this artwork from outside Disney or outside artists that do Disney uh, pieces and it's fantastic some really cool stuff yeah it's my opinion that there is not enough enough high end stuff at Disney I mean unless you go up into you know what was it the $30,000 Arebus Brothers Castle which is a something not really many people (laughs) want once you get past the Disney print or maybe a Dooney and Burke bag there's not really enough high end stuff for people who want to take home, you know, we, we just said, none of us here have kids. So buying Disney merchandise, I would like something that, you know, a collectible, a true collectible. Not something that Disney slaps a limited edition of 10000 on. But I'm talking a real high-end collectible, and I think those are few and far between. But are there enough stores that you think would come in? Because all this additional acreage going into Disney Springs. D- Downtown Disney Disneyland is a lot smaller than our downtown Disney and with Disney Springs adding so much more is there enough that can they can add enough high end enough well Disney downtown Disney in California I don't think I've ever been there when there wasn't somebody performing live it might be Zamfir and his pan flute (laughs) 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 there's someone there performing I mean there's always something going on you you know you see some of that coming into the Pleasure Island what used to be the Pleasure Island area you've got some of those kind of like street musicians uh, set up. We saw it a few weeks ago when we were there. And I thought that was interesting. But I also think that you look at something like Splitsville, uh, which just recently opened. If they can find more concept locations like that, that kind of, you know, different fun, if they can throw a few more in like that, I think that would be huge. What about Disney Quest? Got it. Honestly, isn't it time to gut Disney Quest? They should make it a JC Penny at this point. <laughs> <laughs> a JCP. Coles. <laughs> I think, well, I think what you're that, seeing is... I heard they were, sorry. Sorry, John, sorry. go ahead. I, I think what, you're, what the article pointed out and what we're all sort of talking about is now downtown Disney is going to become a stay-and-play destination. It's not just going to be about coming and getting your Disney souvenirs or just going to the movies or just getting something to eat. You're trying to create a play-and-stay environment. 
um, they're talking about neighborhoods. One will have live entertainment, like you mentioned. Um, so I think that that's the entire concept is that maybe more along the lines of a celebration of, of Disney's celebration, the town. Oh, okay. The oh. town of celebration. It's a I thought you meant like it's I thought a you celebration. Were being, yeah. A jubilee. A <laughs> hundred more years of magic. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I was like. Putting on a show. Six months. Like I think, the town of celebration. I understand. Want. I think the problem is is that downtown Disney in California seems organic. It's kind of like you're walking through and there's restaurants and stores mixed together. I think the idea of making a shopping area and an eating area, I, I think the fact that it's more organic, I think because they're also going to have to attract Orlando folks. To keep this alive during what the shoulder seasons, we don't have slow times anymore. They're going to need Orlando folks to go there, so it's going to have. There's going to be have have to be some sort of draw. I tell you what, if they put Trader Sam's in there or oh, something yeah. like that, something a local hangout, a, a cult following, something like yeah, but, uh, uh, the Adventurers Club had a cult following and it closed, right. which tells me that it wasn't profitable. So if it's, clo- I mean, Disney doesn't close at profit centers, so the fact that they closed the Adventurers Club means it was losing money. So I think to myself. I don't. I can only speak for me, and I'm maybe well, not typical, but I wouldn't go to downtown Disney to, ha- to go to a tiki bar. But that's why well, it has to do a different thing. I, right. I think. I, I think you have to. Uh, I think by you, you can't you can't dismiss Trader Sam's as a tiki bar. It's not just it, that's the theming of it. It's a whole atmosphere thing. Uh, honestly, I you know, it's a it's a place I look forward to. When I think about going to Disneyland, one of the top things on my head, and I don't drink, one of the top things, I, I, I can't wait to go hang out at Trader Sam's. I think we were there every single day. We was there every night. And I think that, you know, uh, Adventurous Club had a cult following, but you had to invest in going to visit the Adventurers Club. It was a whole show. It was also it was a buy-in. A show. You had to buy into a premise. You had to buy into right. a theatrical. That's not what Trader Sam's is. Uh, Trader Sam's is just a location with some absolutely great bar food, some it's, really creative drinks, some great uh, collectible mugs. It's the it's the pinnacle of bars for Disney fans, yes. I think. It, it, it's a bar that celebrates being a Disney fan is exactly what it is. But again, I think that what we're looking at is Disney needs to make... Needs to make Something for everybody. I think Splitville, Splitsville, is is a, something that is attracting people now for one reason. I think the dine-in theaters are doing it. They have to create all of these things because there's going to be people who say, "I don't care about Trader Sam's," but might go because there's a guest store. Right. Right. Exactly. No. Of course. Obviously, you have to have a, a variety of Wide things. Net, right. But I think that anybody who's been to Trader Sam's out in Disneyland that hears that they might open one up out here, I think it's a, would be excited by it. They also have to get something that's going to pull in the cast members because cast members will s- spend money and will support the local economy right. as well. And I think they lost that when Pleasure Island dried up. I think they lost their cast member support. I'd like to ask Tommy, being such a such a big fan of Pleasure Island and Downtown Disney, when you see this information, when you see the stuff that's released, what it, what is your wish list? What is your hopes for the general feel of this area? What do you want to see them do with this? Well, I just want things that are unique. First of all, no more Landry's, please. Uh, no more Landry restaurants. But, uh, uh, amen. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think um, what I would like to see is a mix. Um, you know, I, I just really think, as far as the restaurants and, and shops, I don't care a whole lot, uh, personally. Um, I think uh, there's some there's some good ideas uh, on the table from the from the vendor list I saw, but I I'm really hoping more than anything that they can take. Um, a concept where maybe you have a rest like a bongos concept where you have a restaurant during the day that that focuses more into adult at night and they can get the best of both worlds um, because i i just think that 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 element is still really missing and like i said doesn't have to be um straight up uh, dance club type situations but people it, there's some great opportunities to hang out in different places, but people do want to dance, and I think that that's an important aspect. Um, so I'd like to see that. And as far as the restaurants, I mean, just something that 
isn't too relatively chain based um i really would like them to do some some unique things uh and uh and you know they're they're expanding world of disney which is going to be uh popular <laughs> as it is so th- those are kind of my wish list for it and that it actually happens which Tom, everything Tom, looks like it will but i still got to throw that in tommy what do you think is going to happen to disney quest well that's i had heard that it was going to it was on the list for an overhaul um, and so, although that that's not exactly a really um, high intensity rumor, but that I had I'd heard that it was in the midst of an over, uh, it was potentially getting an overhaul. Well, so. I'm I'm stunned that something hasn't been done with it already. You yeah, talk about a huge amount of space there. I can't believe. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I can't believe it's profitable. I can't believe it's making any money. Who goes there? On a company yeah, exactly, and, and I'm a, kind of left to rot. You know, and I'm a I'm a video game fan. But I, hey, don't you have better video games in your I do living room? That's my point. Is that yeah. there's nothing that draws me there. The only thing um, good there was a cheesecake factory, and they took it out. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Tommy. What were some of the other uh, vendors you saw you saw on the list? Do you remember? Uh, okay, I saw. I'm actually going to pull it up. So a couple different things. Um, American Girl. Uh, oh please, those creepy dolls! Oh those god, creepy seven thousand dollar dolls. <laughs> I know. Uh, New Balance. Um, New the, Balance. The one that interested me was the Edison, which is a nightclub in L.A. Um, it's got uh, it's got listed wine bar. Um, it does have Trader Sam's and Chanatiki Bar. Um, no, it would uh, go Food good Network here. is listed, which kind of goes in with the. Um, rumors that had happened a while back which was that Food Network was vetting for or in talks with Disney about the A-Tracks location uh, to turn into a restaurant. We're going to get a um, Guy Fieri American barn. Oh God, <laughs> Whatever that restaurant is in New York City. Oh. So the American girl can eat the American bar. <laughs> <laughs> we Somebody can eat the American girl at the American bar. <laughs> Oh. oh yeah. And then okay, I'm moving uh, on. Somebody in the chat already mentioned something. Hold on, Tommy. Maybe. Tommy, somebody, hold on just a second. Somebody in our okay. chat room mentioned something. Um, in I don't know where else it is in the world, but in London there's a restaurant called Wagamama, oh. which is a sushi Asian fusion restaurant, and we've eaten in several of them. This would be, it, and it's very fast. It's um it's not fast food where you go to a counter, but you sit down and it's a very quick restaurant. Mm-hmm. It's kind of tapas style, like small right, little things right. that small you plates, get, mm-hmm. and you share. This would be a huge addition. That would be great. I think you you uh, ate at Wagamama yeah, with us. He suffered well, at Wagamama. I, I, I want to make sure Tommy has time to finish the list that Sorry. he has. Uh, it's a, yeah, well, you know, it's it, again, these are just names that they're either vetting or maybe are in talks with. Right. Um, uh, Apple is, is on there. Uh, let's see. Something called Walt's Place. Uh, there's a... a but it's his boathouse, uh, which kind of goes along with the. Um, actually, in the renderings, uh, there is a, a lighthouse in the location where Rock and Roll Beach Club formerly was, which goes along with previous rumors there. So I think that these things have been in the works for a while. Um, Argo T. Uh, what is and, that? And ben Affleck's there's a couple show. other just sort of generic, like Disney Burger, Disney Bakery. So just kind of placeholders for other ideas they might have, but that that's kind of uh, a general idea. Oh, Tommy, that's so <laughs> close to the camera. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not reading that. Wow, your, <laughs> sorry your pores that. look lovely this time of year. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else, but the idea of a New Balance store coming to downtown Disney thrills me. <laughs> so that that's a general overview of the list. You know, if so they bring, has, in, uh, I'll keep an eye out. Of here's course. the here's the thing: if they bring an Apple store and a Coach store to Downtown Disney, I'm going to spend a lot more time at Downtown Disney. Well, you can walk through Mall of Millennia and you can shoot a gun from one end to the other. I don't advocate this, <laughs> um, but you can walk through Mall of Millennia and not see ten people until you get to the Apple store. Right, and they needed. It's kind of like they need a lubricant to get in. It's a shoehorn and lube <laughs> together. It's and you terrible. Think, are you giving this crap away? You know what? There's your there's your Disney Quest. Turn into a giant Apple store. Exactly. It was so popular. Oh a five story. Right. They've got an Apple Flagship. store in the basement of the oh. Louvre. They can put one next to House of Blues. I'm just very interested to see where it's going to go. Um, but uh, all right. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Tommy. We appreciate your. Uh, input and stay warm 
out in uh, I will Wisconsin. I my best. It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Take Tommy. care, Tommy. Thanks. Bye, Tommy. Bye, Tommy. Bye. 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 All right, that will do it for the news. We're going to move on to Rapid Fire, and we will start with Mr. Magi. All right. Um, Disney's bringing back Mickey Mouse in 2D shorts. Um, as opposed to 3D shorts? As opposed to long pants. Mickey Mouse cartoons are coming back to TV as Disney attempts to revive one of the world's most popular characters. 19 episodes, hand-drawn and in 2D, will de- debut June 28th on the Disney Channel, Disney.com, and the Watch Disney Channel app. And not Hulu. Really, not showing up. These are just sh- the really small little videos. I, they posted the first one on Disney.com. Correct. And it's really good. It's three, a mine. It's three. No, it's not a mine. <laughs> no, it's like three and a half minutes. It's three minutes, 30 seconds, and Mickey goes to a Paris cafe where there's a shortage of croissants. See, they're, they're not old traditional. They're kind of like really stylized, mm-hmm. and I, th- I thought it was really good. So these are brand new. Brand new, 19, mm-hmm. newly done. Huh. And hand drawn classic animation. They're gorgeous. The 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 one they posted, the Croissant de Triomphe, is it's amazing. I, I'm surprised that they're hand drawn. They look almost like flash animation to me. They're too mean? clean. Kind uh, of. There's like just it. the way it looks. It almost looks like digital illustration, and oh. they put it into flash to kind of animate some of it. But I'm not sure. Uh, you know, who knows what the technology is? I mean, it's very possible that they can still call it hand drawn. Yeah. If they do it that That's way. That's true. Right? Yeah. All right. Thank you, John. Kevin. Uh, it, Adventures by Disney has decided that they are going to stop people from becoming angry with them. In the past, Adventures by Disney has had to cancel certain departure dates for lack of enrollment. And what happens is they, in the past, have guaranteed, guaranteed dates 70 days out. You wouldn't know for sure that your trip was actually going to take place until 70 days prior to departure. And there were several reasons for this. Right. Mostly was uh, attendance. If there was enough people enrolled in the trip, et cetera. They have now decided that they will guarantee certain dates to go. So if you don't want to take a chance on your any particular date not going, on adventuresbydisney.com, they have a list of dates that are guaranteed to depart. Also, I want to say on, we put that on dreamsunlimitedtravel.com as well. So if you go to the Adventures by Disney section, you can look at all the trips and see which ones are guaranteed. There you go. All right. Thank you, Kevin. William, your boy. All right. So the American Idol Experience is going to be adding nine new Spanish songs to their catalog. Um, Five pop songs. We have four also Disney ones from the movies. And I apologize right now when I attempt to pronounce these to anybody who is Spanish. Oh, this should be good. It is. I've been practicing for the past two hours. Take the Yiddish out of your Spanish. (laughs) (laughs) Let's hear this Jew try to say these. So, (laughs) Iyo Sigo Aki by Paulina Rubio. I don't know that one. Uh, I think we should make you perform these. I'm not going to try to pronounce that one. The one I do know how to pronounce is Oi by Miss Beyonce. So, Yay for oh, <laughs> <laughs> that one was right in your wheelhouse, wasn't it? Exactly. That's what I was like, I can do this one. It's Yiddish. Loki Lo Soy, uh, This Is Me by Demi Lovato. Una Noche Mas by Jennifer Lopez. And then the Disney ones range from Lion King, Ciclo Sin Fin, Circle of Life, No Importa La Distancia, Go to Distance from Hercules, Mi Reflejo, Reflection by Mulan, and... <laughs> And me, Corazon Viva Ross. You'll be my heart from Tarzan. So anybody brave enough to try those? Well, you know, I think uh, it's interesting that they're doing this. Uh, one of the contestants this year in the top ten on American Idol, uh, I believe he's from Puerto Rico, and has been doing some of his songs in Spanish, and it's been a huge hit. Um, and so I wonder if that's informing any of this... I'm sure it has partly too, but at the same time, we've had so many guests coming to Disney who are not from the United States. They're from, you know, down south, of right. South America. So I don't know. I'm sure they want to be able to include them in the chance to sing and perform True. as well. So. True. That's a good point. Do you think they do like a, a test to hear your Spanish before they let you sing these songs, or <laughs> <laughs> can you just go in? Can I, I go I... sing No Importa La Distancia? If you sing it Please like that, do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I. Uh... I tell you, I, you know, I, I thought after last season I was going to stop watching Idol because uh, it got, had gotten so bad. I got to be honest; I think this year it's been great. Mm. I, think I didn't even great. know it was still on. I know we forgot completely um, about it. Some really, really talented, especially some of the women, really talented. So, mm. 
But okay, thank you, William. De nada. Sean. Oh. All right. Uh, tomorrow, you can start getting your annual pass with an RFID chip in it from Epcot. So annual pass holders at Walt Disney World can trade in their paper pass and get a new plastic one. So you don't have to wait in the huge long lines um, at the turnstiles anymore to put your ticket now, into something, the... Something oh. we found out by accident was if you go to the scanner mm-hmm. for the RFID thing and you say, oops, I, I'm in the wrong line, there's a cast member with an iPhone. I've seen those. Okay. With a swiper. So, I mean, it wasn't a big inconvenience for us, but I think the RFID chip is a cool idea. I think oh, it's I a good idea. Go I was worried that they were going to give us all wristbands. And as a local, I don't want to carry that wristband around with me everywhere. Right. I mean, what would you do with your Nike? Well, the the question, the big burning question among annual pass holders is now answered. You know, how are they going to handle annual pass pass. holders with this? Perfect. You get a pass with an RFID chip. And the dates for this right now are March 20th. So tomorrow until May 19th. And you do this at the Odyssey Center in Epcot. Ooh, got to go there. One one of the things, though, is the, the other big question is now what about annual pass holders and Fast Pass Plus? How is Disney going to handle people who want to go for a day or two days? Are they going to give? And them what about passes? annual pass holders who aren't here in that window? I think so it's they're... just a trial period, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, more. You know, right. we have, still have plenty of questions. We don't know. Right. But uh, at least this is one question answered. How they're going to handle annual passes? Where we're going to have to wear the wristbands? What was that window again? What was the time frame? Uh, tomorrow until May. 19th. Awesome. Thank you, Sean. Dustin. Okay, I have a rapid fire about uh, Kevin's favorite type of magic. Limited time magic. It's dumb. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, it's, uh, you know, Epcot is kind of famous for all the different scavenger hunts that they have. They have the... uh, what is that thing in the Phineas and Ferb, Master P, whatever it is. Uh, Agent P. Agent P, yeah. Master P's a rapper. Um, and then they have... <laughs> 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 I did not mean to do that. Uh, and then, of course, they had, uh, they've had they had a bunch of scavenger hunts before, but they're going to have a special Easter egg hunt uh, based on the Disney Vinylmation uh, during the Easter period coming up. So it'll be uh, between... Where are my dates? Uh, between March 18th and the 24th. And what you do is you have these uh, little stickers. I'll show you the picture uh, for those of you watching. You have little uh, Easter egg stickers that you place onto your park map. And once you're done uh, collecting all the different Easter egg stickers, once you find the actual things in the park location, you bring it back to uh, uh, one of the areas. You bring it back to either the Port of Entry or International Gateway, and they'll give you a special uh, Final Mation key ring, limited edition, limited time magic. And when does this run to? This is uh, March 18th to the 24th, so it's an Easter egg hunt in Epcot. It's a cool little interactive thing, and and it's going to be a busy period in the parks then, so you should be able to see a lot of uh, people running around looking for Easter eggs while you're in the park there. Cool. Yeah. I've heard this is either free or get to pay for it. Do you, do we... It is four ninety five. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't mention that. Yeah, you get a special park map and stickers for four ninety five. Then the uh, final mission key ring is free at the end. I give him five dollars. Can I just get the key ring? <laughs> you don't want to walk around. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work. All right, thank you. Oh, Dustin, I, I noticed you're all in VCU today. I am. Yeah, we have a, our first round game. We got ranked number five VCU uh, in the Southern Conference of the NCAA basketball. for ping pong. Oh, what, what game NCAA we're men's figure basketball. skating. So go Rams. Okay, that's my plug. Synchronized swim. Is that your college? It is. Yes. That's where I graduated. Yeah, Virginia Commonwealth. Go Rams. All right, thank you, Dustin. Gregory. Um, earlier last week, it was announced um, the logo for Star Wars Weekends. Um, that Some we don't dork have on in a there. flight suit. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually um, it's from Return of the Jedi this year. It has Mickey on a speeder bike and Chip and Dale are both Ewoks. It actually Does looks that really. That picture cool. have anything to do with what he's talking Absolutely about? Absolutely not. But, um, you know, we do what we can do. Um, and also along with that, they also announced in the first and second weekend they're going to bring back Ray Park, who's been Darth Maul, and he was also like Toad. Toad and, in X-Men. Yes. Yeah. And, of course, Warwick Davis, who is there every year, and he was Wicked the Ewok. Well, this is, they're the there every year because they have nothing else to do. Well, no, Warwick <laughs> Davis still works a lot. I, mean, I would like to see Warwick Davis. He, he's he been in a lot of uh, Ricky Gervais. He's in the parts department in Ikea. Is he? <laughs> 
he's a uh, he's a very okay. I know you're gonna send me hate mail because I don't know who Warwick. <laughs> he's a he's a very prominent actor. He was on An Idiot Abroad. He was on uh, Life's Too Short. He was on Extras. He's been on a lot of British. That one. <laughs> <laughs> he was wicked the Ewok. He was the, <laughs> Sorry. This is never good. He was he was the leprechaun. He was uh, Willow. The Willow. You'd recognize. Him. Oh, he was, was Willow. He was man number three. <laughs> <laughs> he was corpse six and six feet under. He was in Harry Potter. Yeah, he's, a woman he was, he's very famous. <laughs> he was Professor Flitwick in Harry Potter too. He's a very famous actor. Yeah. Show the dork in the flight suit again. <laughs> I actually have one of those. So. The dork in the no, flight suit. The dork in the flight suit right now is doing "Stop in the Name of Love." Yeah, that's because it's Dion Warwick. <laughs> no, Warwick Davis. Oh. Dion Warwick. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's what friends are for. God, Craig, I'm glad you chose this rap. Oh yes, so am I. Also unrelated, I wanted to say happy birthday to my sister. She's turning 28 today. Happy birthday. What's happy birthday, name? sister. Happy birthday, What's her sister? name? Her name's sister Megan. Craig. Maddie. Megan. Megan. Yeah. Tinkerbell Warwick. something on the boards. She'll be watching. Tinkerbell something oh, on the boards. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Megan. Happy birthday, Tinkerbell. All right. That'll do it for Rapid Fire. Uh, for our closing segment this week, uh, we uh, received a submission from one of our listeners called, uh, named Cass Pettigrew. Uh, Cass suggested that we do something called Diz or Dat, which uh, we really have to work on a better name. But uh, basically, we're going to uh, put out three photos. And you have to guess whether or not these photos were taken in Disney or not in Disney. And uh, we're going to give away some $50 gift cards to people who get this right. Uh, Just send us an email, podcast at disunplugged.com. Tell us for each picture whether it was taken in Disney or not. From all the correct answers we get, we're going to draw five names at random and give each one a $50 gift card. So uh, these will be posted on disunplugged.com for those who are listening and not watching the show. But if you're watching, we're going to show you the pictures now. Here's the first one. Is this taken at Disney or not at Disney? Look carefully. And identify the hand. <laughs> I actually know who the hand is. Do you? Yeah. I know who the hand is, too. Number two. At Disney or not at Disney? To be or not to be. And number three. What is that? What the hell is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's water. Okay. Oh, it's with oh. someone's tooth. It's the other side of the water. It's a dog bone in a lake. It's the back side of water. <laughs> Is this picture taken in Disney or not in Disney? I can effectively answer one of these correctly. Uh, the other two, I have no earthly idea. So if you think you know, send us your answers. Podcast at disunplug.com. Of all the correct answers we receive, we will pick five people at random to receive a $50 Disney gift card. Simple enough. So that will do it for our show for, or for our new show for this week. For those watching live on DisneyUnplugged.com, stay tuned next for John and Kevin's review of the Liberty Tree Tavern. And as I said, a new phrase is being coined in this review. You're not going to want to miss it. After that, Sean and William are going to talk about Uh, options for military families at Walt Disney World. All that coming up soon. Thanks everybody for being with us. And please remember, stay out of the damn lakes. 